Hey, what's up everybody? It's Matt from HowToMotorcycleRepair.com. In today's video, I want to talk about a new video I got out, and it's on this engine right here. Alright guys, so this is a sample video. Uh, the full video can be purchased on my website, and you're going to see a note pop up to tell you how long that full length video is. Um, this video covers the 2007 to 2012 KTM 450 SXF and also the 07 to 09 KTM 505 XXF. All right, so this video covers everything except disassembling the cylinder head. I do not take out the valves or the valve springs um, simply because the head was rebuilt um, not too long ago prior to this rebuild, and I'll get to why it failed in a, in a minute here but uh, there's no need for me to take it apart and also when I get in situations where the head needs to be serviced I just ship it out let someone else handle that let a machine shop handle that I can't do that in my home garage and most likely neither can you so you have to farm some stuff out and that's okay but we do uh, split the cases take the transmission fully apart replace all the bearings the clips the washers the water pump is covered, the bearing, the seals, and also valve timing and adjustment. Um, we have to pop the sprockets loose on the cams in order to time it, and I cover on how to do that in this video. All right, so let's talk about how this engine failed. Uh, what happened is the dampers in the clutch basket broke apart, made its way into the oil system or blocked the screen, and it starved for oil. The connecting rod the large end connecting rod, seized up, trashed the rod, the crank, the piston, and the cylinder wall. But luckily it didn't damage the head. So the new parts, um, the crank was sent out to Crankworks. They rebuilt it with a hot rod kit. The cylinder was sent out to Millennium for replating. We're running a Vertex piston. And then all the bearings and seals are just simply OEM brand new replacement parts. So overall, this engine isn't that difficult to rebuild. Uh, I would really encourage you to just do it yourself, save yourself some money, don't take it to a shop, and pay outrageous labor rates. And if you need further support, you can feel free to email me for any questions that you may have. I'll try to answer you know, all the questions that you guys have pertaining to this rebuild. So this video streams instantly after purchase, and you can watch it on any device. Unlimited views, it's yours forever. All right, you're gonna need the service manual for rebuilding this engine. Um, I would recommend that you go to ChristophSX.com. He has a bunch of service manuals for KTMs available for free. Um, and here it is, I printed it out, the appropriate sections, and I just put it in a binder because, um, just to keep more organized. He also has a donate button on his website. Make sure if you grab a service manual, Flip him a few bucks. He's got a lot of content, a lot of service manuals on his site, so just consider that when you grab one for free. Um, in addition to the service manual, I went to Rocky Mountain and I printed out every single parts diagram. So this one's the water pump, the transmission, and that way it's just another tool. It's it's an exploded diagram, and um, you know that helps when taking stuff apart as well. Another resource I found is the spare parts manual for this one. It's a 2010 and it just has, again, it has uh, part numbers and the exploded diagrams and it really helped out when putting this together because you know what, the service manual, the illustrations kind of suck. They're two by two pictures, they're black and white, can't really see what's going on. I mean, look at this. Look how small these pictures are. So. This video is going to help you out a lot, guys, because, I mean, it's it's very clear how I show you how to do it. Also, if you click here, it'll send you to my blog post, which will have all the parts used, all the tools used, a link to the service manual, and where you can buy the video. I mean, everything's in that link, so just click here and follow that and just read that blog post. I'll try to ex explain everything uh, as much as possible. I'll have links to all the special tools that you can just buy on Amazon or whatever. And also, you don't have to buy all the special KTM tools. I'll show you how you can make some 
uh, at home and save yourself a bunch of money. So just, I got some pictures of those on my website as well. All right, guys, well, enjoy the sample and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. So again, you're going to see some links pop up and also in the video description, there's going to be a bunch of links. So make sure to check those out. things uh, right here remove this plug it's a 14 mil and I do want to mention that everything is loose in this motor when I got it it was completely taken apart I was handed a box full of parts and bags so what I did is I cleaned everything put it all back together loosely and now I'm shooting the video so I can do this video for you guys so everything's loose um, so but I will show you how to remove tightened fasteners. Um, so we'll definitely go through that. Yeah, so first step, obviously drain the oil, make sure the oil's out of it, remove this cap, and let me get the point, camera pointed up here and we'll uh, begin disassembly. All right, so you're gonna wanna blow some air in here to flush out any uh, dirt or debris and remove the spark plug. Then taking 10 mil uh, socket or impact or whatever and loosen all these three valve cover bolts and there's a gasket under here and this owner bought all new ones so we'll replace that as well just three bolts for the valve cover and you're gonna want to take that and the gasket off and there's one more gasket here for the spark plug tube all right, the reason we removed this plug is so we can access this bolt here and roll the motor over manually to position the cams um, at top dead center so we can remove all this. So um, while I'm up here videoing this, this is where you're going to rotate the motor. And you're going to want to rotate it. So you're going to want to rotate it in a counterclockwise direction up here. Okay, so before we disassemble all this, it'd be a good idea to check all your valve lash. So that way you can write it down, and if it's off, once you have everything apart, you can just simply replace the shim. Now, since everything's loose, I can't do that, but we'll cover valve adjustment um, later in this video. However, it would just be a good idea to check it right now before um, we go any further. But take your 10 mil and loosen the cam cap bolts. And notice that there's two dowel pins here, so don't lose that. And also there's an O-ring or gasket here that you can see that's in very bad condition, so we'll, we'll replace that later. All right, guys, let's lock this in top dead center now. So just rotate the engine until your connecting rod is at the highest point and thread this bolt in here. And again, I just went to the hardware store and matched up the threads, got a long bolt, and I ground down a nice chamfer on there. So that's going to go into the crank and just lock it at top dead center. So once you get it in the notch, you can see that I'm in that groove, right? Just get it a little loose and then crank it down until it's tight. So right there. So now you, you're positive that you're at top dead center and you're locked. And by the way, we're on the right side of the motor. Uh, now the engine is already rolled over to top dead center and you can 
uh, tell by um, these flats right here on the cams are facing up and it's parallel to this. So when these three surfaces are parallel and the cam lobes are facing this way, it's at top dead center. Now what I'm gonna do is lock the cam down so I can loosen the sprocket bolts and that way we can reset the valve timing later in the video. Now I do wanna mention if you put a straight edge across here, here, and here, and these are completely parallel, then your timing is correct and you may not wanna go through this procedure, but I'm gonna go through it just so I can show you how to do it and set the timing of this engine later in the video. Now KTM makes a special tool for this. However, it costs like 200 bucks or so. Um, so the owner of this bike actually machined this block that goes right here. He holds it down with some fasteners and um, he's able to um, crack those nuts loose. So let's go ahead and put this on. And I've seen guys use all sorts of things um, from angle iron to So we'll tighten this down. Cams are locked. We'll go ahead and spin the motor around. All right, let's see how difficult these are to break loose. Too bad. All right, so we'll have to press the sprockets off or at least pop them loose. Um, but that's how this tool works. So that worked out nice. Hopefully. You can come up with an easy DIY solution for this as well. So here's just a better look at it. It's just a bar with four holes in it. That's it. And this notch here is because this bar was just too wide and it needed to clear the lobes of the exhaust cam. So really if you got a bar this wide, this wide right here, which is in between as wide as the two flats here, you'd be good to go. So now we can pull this cam cap off 10 mil. Again, there'll be dowel pins underneath it, so. Okay, there's two dowel pins right here. Don't lose those. Remove your cams. So now we're on the right side of the motor and we're, we're gonna remove these two caps here. Take a five mil. And there's an O-ring here, so we're gonna replace that as well.
Okay, now we're gonna screw in a bolt to use as a little puller. I believe this is an M4 by 0.7 thread, so you can see I can just pull this shaft out that that plug covered up. So we'll get another angle here to, to see what we need to do next, but uh, basically this is gonna pull that shaft out, all right? And there's two of them, so we're gonna pull that both out. All right, so before we pull that shaft out, flip this little arm up, and right under here is your shim. So pop that out. And you're gonna want to pay. Um, you're gonna want to pay attention to where these come out. So this is the left exhaust. This is the right exhaust. Left intake, right intake. So make sure when you lay these out, um, you keep track of them, and including these parts because um, they all have different thicknesses and tolerances. And your shim, your clearance is based off of the tolerances on these parts. So make sure you uh, just keep track of that. All right, flip this guy up. Oh, this guy just jumped out, so careful not to lose it. And then when you pull the bolt out, or the shaft, it loosens these guys up. See that? Same thing with the intake. And that guy, that guy fell way down here, so careful not to lose these guys. They like to stick, so we got them. Insert your screw here, thread it in a little bit. Okay, time to release the tension on the cam chain. This model is has been converted to a manual tensioner. Um, normally these bikes have a hydraulic tensioner where it requires oil pressure to put force on the chain and keep it tight. Um, the problem that this owner found, and I think other people, uh, is that when you don't have sufficient oil pressure, you lose tension on your chain and all sorts of issues happen. Also, this blocks off the oil passage when you convert it to the manual one, therefore more oil flow is directed to the top end. So there's some benefits of, of running a manual uh, tensioner. And basically this one's really easy to uh, set up, um, but if you loosen this lock nut and back off this uh, screw here it releases all the tension and it just removes like this you know again everything's loose uh, I don't have a stock tensioner to show you but basically see this just moves the plunger in and out and that's how you get your your tensioning and they put a block off plug in here to uh, cap the stock oil passage Okay, next up, let's zip off these fasteners. Move this cover, 